boy do we want to get that thing out of the yard. This time we're going to show you how we get started painting the boat, but first we have to finish all final fabrication and installing hardware. Opening ring. <laughs> And we'll hit it with the jigsaw right now. Cool. And that's the way it's going to be. It's all cleared in. Tubes in place, ready to get tabbed in on both sides. It's got little blocks holding it. And also yesterday I did the combing boxes. There's the bottom of the starboard box. It's the same thing on the other side. And these things are being held in place right now. Drilled a couple little holes in the back and pulled tight with wire. You can start to get an idea what the combing box is gonna look like. And I'll be glassing right where my finger's going. Okay, on to tabbing that. So, still working. This is a really nice piece of carbon sort of utility board. Whoever made this did vacuum bagging just with some layers of, yeah, let's say 45, 45. So it's super strong, and very light. So I have been making shapes and things out of it. Let's see, it has a steel ply here. So I cut out just now uh, about 10 little landing pads to put all of the deck hardware on. So let's go install those. Okay, the area's been prepped for five plates here. There are little pencil outlines where we want each one to go. So just did a alcohol wipe down. And by gluing these plates, we're going to spread the load out over more of the deck surface area. Just like to avoid pressure pinch points on the deck and the core really. Pressing nice and hard so I get glue out all the edges. Good. <clears throat> that was for the two halyard clutches. One is the dagger board down cleat. Spinnaker tack mini clutch. This is a Harkin Carbo cam cleat to park the jib sheet when the winch is needed for spinnaker. Along with the spinnaker, or whenever you want to double slot something. So the screecher and the jib. The jib will park here. This one is the Starboard mask rotation controller. So these flat plates glued down with structural glue are taking care of the curve in the hull so we can apply hardware on flat planes. That stops leaks and makes everything stronger. Hey there. Wow. Here she comes. Oh, Final lap. lap. Final lap. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. <laughs> so happy. These are the new deck cover plates. Armstrong hatches. So the two-part system goes away, so that's why these holes are filled in. But these things, a six inch needs a six and three quarter inch hole, and so I have to trim it away. And this needs an eight inch. Take a piece of paper, fold it into eighths, marked four and three eighths. Figure out what edge I want to sacrifice here.
There we go, holes cut. There. That's how it's supposed to look. You see how that just cinches down on the big rubber gasket? Flush. Okay, done. Just have to do that seven more times. This is not happening in California in late September or October 1st. I was just sanding out here and I got run out. Holy Toledo. I gotta get this fixed. They just kept going, did a bunch of work on getting those holes for the net lacing um, rounded over. We're like 99% done with the bodywork now. I did find a little bit of hollow still on that patch, so there's one more bit of fairing compound in there. Hand sand that tomorrow. A little bit back here. Now yeah, there's half a dozen of them around. So to get into primer, we'll do that tiny bit of sanding tomorrow, and masking. So we have to mask all of this off. I'm gonna mask the windows, I'm not gonna remove them. Feeling fine about masking them because I'm going to add a black Sikaflex bead around the outside here. So we'll just mask these off. They were professionally installed. The prior owner told me about that. I still have to hand sand the edges of the hardware pads. It's pretty splotchy, pretty ugly. Can't wait to see it all monotone gray in the next couple days. Just looking through here, these things are working great. Bone dry inside through the big rain we just had. And finally, after so much surface preparation, it was time to get some primer onto the boat. This was pretty satisfying rolling this stuff on. Time for a progress report on the mind-numbing details of painting. Green stuff is bearing putty, chasing all the pinholes that the gray primer eliminated. The whole boat is in primer now. I haven't been filming much of that because who wants to watch me paint? Nobody. And yes, last night in the evening light, the sun really low, it really highlights all these little spots. You can see all these little green things. Tick, 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 ticky tacky. Boom, boom. This front end is all clean. I like how these came out. That's instead of big hardware that used to be here. This is where the old force day was. The chain plate fitting. A little, a little bit of the weave of the carbon was showing. So refilled. The net tubes are looking pretty good now. Tricky getting paint around these. These are all metal eye straps. I started to pull these screws out. They go into aluminum backing plates inside the beam, They're permanently embedded. But these are stainless steel screws and the first two were pretty difficult and I could just see the nightmare of, well, there must be at least 50 or 60 screws in here. Some of those not working so I decided, nope, those are never coming off. We'll just do the very tedious masking of every single one of those. But it looks amazingly different see here in this light I don't mind seeing that reinforcing strapping right there that's where the barber hauler goes There's another one there these chain plates look pretty good painted in so gonna hand sand all this green stuff right now and then put a put a 220 soft pad on the sander and get the primer knocked back down a little bit it's, it's not orange peel or anything, but I can feel a little bit of roughness and actually there's some peeling, orange peel. So 
for those who ask why would you sand the primer, I'd say this is what starts to define a serviceable paint job from something that's actually really good looking. Look at the car auto body places, they of course hand sand all of their primer to get that nice show car gloss. You gotta have a great surface underneath to get good quality top coat paint. Primer's looking really good on the hulls. I think we're just gonna go with single coat, so I'm gonna polish that up later. But first, we're doing the 220 sand on the deck and the cockpit. Maybe the beams. So that we can put a second coat of primer up on the high traffic areas. 20 on my sander, turned down to just under 3,000 RPM. It's important to go slow. Today, the cockpit, well, basically all of the deck above the whole flange on through the cockpit. Got a second coat of primer. And I just made the final run of pinhole searching and filling. Can you see all the little light green things? So there are probably 50 little dabs all around. We're gonna let that harden up. It is about five o'clock and the grooving work now is to take the entire boat down with a 320 sand. We want 320 prior to putting on paint. So looking nice and fair and clean. What a world of difference. Well, we got a lot done this evening, but nowhere near enough to be able to paint tomorrow. Can you guys see where it's all flat and dull? That's all sanded. It's shiny down there. I have to get the pad and lie down on my back tomorrow and sand overhead. And at least half the boat still needs to be done. It takes a while. So we'll take our time tomorrow, Sunday, get all the prep done so that it can be a first thing Monday morning paint job. It's Sunday morning and apparently the aliens took over my mouth last night, told you guys I could just sand this out, get it ready for paint today. Uh, no. So, this hull is done up to 220. Got to do this one now, starting with 120, then 220. Beams need to be started. Then I have to climb under the boat and do the whole thing. 120, 220. And after all that's done this afternoon, in the heat, the entire boat needs a 320 sand. And after all that, I still have to go back and do hand sanding on all the nooks and crannies that I can't reach. See up there where the little pads are? I can't get a machine in there. So that's all hand work. And these were last night's little patches. What, the fourth time I went around filling pinholes and things? But that is the cost of doing a good job. Repetitive motion. This is Ruby's brother, Goose, who's also pretty interested in the ball. He's here at dog camp, taking a quick break from our kids, Griffin and Taylor's house. They live two miles away. So when they're both working, he comes over here. And the two dogs love hanging out. Okay. This 120 grit, the starboard side. You guys tired of watching that yet? It's going to take me about an hour to do this hole. Going for this monotone matte look here and finally the inevitable came to pass it was time to get underneath the boat and work overhead in a really uncomfortable muscle taxing position at least the dogs provided some humor
Well, all the two 20 grit sanding got done, and I'm just on the final sanding, which is the 320. And I'm just starting up on deck, and this rain began. So this is what Tuesday late afternoon. I think the day is shot. It's like a bunch of rain coming at us from the west. Okay, well, that is what ready to paint looks like. Looks pretty good when it's all wet, but I can feel a little bit of orange peeling here on the primer. So that needs its final sand for sure. I'm also a little bit worried I've got some dark spots, which might be tough to get full coverage on the white paint. Might end up being like triple coat right there. I just don't want to put any more primer on at this point. Hopefully that's not a bad call. Found one little nick. I might put some filler in tonight if the rain stops. Okay, welcome to my little misery pit down here. But we have just finished 320 grit on all three hulls. This bottom of my boat here is smooth like glass now. Just needs a little washing job. Ah, oh, finally. So I will take you guys along now. We finished machine sanding the entire boat. Now we're going to hand sand all the nooks and crannies. Get ready for paint finally tomorrow, Thursday. All, all those corners, all these gaps still have to be done. So that will probably be a couple hours of work. Um, and then a thorough wash down. Let it dry. Towel dry also. And then air. Blow it with air. And then we will do a chemical wipe. And be ready for paint. So the goal will be to try to get some paint on tomorrow. I do have some off-site appointments to do in the middle of the day, so we'll see how that goes. But just in terms of amount of effort, it has taken uh, two full days of sanding to get the primer down to paint ready. These are very complicated surfaces on the trimer end, so it's a lot of work to move your sander all around, and it sure takes a lot of time. So just saying all this in case somebody plans on prepping their boat. But if you don't do this level of prep work and get it out to a full 320, it just feels like glass here all over the entire boat. It is not going to be a pro looking paint job. We're getting there. Hopefully you guys like the full monotone look. I have had a couple of people who've seen the boat say, just leave it gray. But this has been hot on a couple of days and it is so bad you actually burn your skin with this surface. I suppose this matte primer soaks in the UV, but still. We're going to make it white with lots of fun stripes. Time for wet sanding. Final sand before the paint. This is a 220 block. This is a 320. You're going to see me use the 320 unless I see a uh, paint drip or some kind of a booger that needs to be knocked back. So all these main surfaces were done with the sander yesterday. We're just doing this to get in the curved places the sander couldn't go. It's so easy to burn through the primer. Now let's go through the rudder gudgeons tower area. All right, that's enough of that. So yes, it's been a long couple of months to go from 20 years in storage to paint ready. I wanted to give a realistic view of everything that goes into these full repaint jobs. So thanks for your patience and sticking through the whole video. Thanks for watching.